This is a Flippy Junkie Podcast, episode 58. Welcome to the Flipping Junkie Podcast. My name is Danny Johnson, former software developer turned house flipper, flipping hundreds of houses. Each week, we bring you interviews, strategies, stories, and motivation to help you get started flipping houses and on your way to becoming your own boss and achieving financial freedom. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now let's get to it. Everybody, welcome back to the Flipping Junkie Podcast. We're in the middle of this series where we're covering online lead generation for real estate investors. This is part four. We're talking about SEO and content marketing. And this is really huge. And I know a lot of people have been waiting uh, to hear more about this because most of the leads that I generate online are from ranking my house buying site in the organic search, search results. So these are the search results. When you go to Google, you search in for something. And then the results that it displays there underneath the ads are your organic search results. And so ranking my house buying site at the top of that is where I I usually generate my best leads, uh, meaning they're the highest converting ones because more of them actually become deals than a lot of leads I get from other marketing sources. They're also the cheapest leads uh, and deals that I generate as well uh, for my cost per lead and cost per deal are usually the lowest with my house buying website that's ranking the organic leads that come through from when people search for something, see my website in the search results at the top of page one, uh, usually between the, the first, second, or third spot, and then they click on that, go to my website, and submit the information. So I've been using a website to generate these motivated seller leads online for over a decade now, and during that time, I've become obsessed, you know, really obsessed with um, figuring out how to how to uh, rank the site to the top of the search results and stay there. Because as you know, there's always competition and there's been more and more competition, but but have managed to keep that ranking high and generating most of my leads still online. So things change fast, obviously, online, and uh, it's a lot to keep up with. But what I'm sharing today on the podcast is is what's currently working. And I'm also going to be discussing what should work in the foreseeable future as well, because it boils down to the basic setup of how search engines work and how they will continue to work because it's uh, just you know, based on how they're set up and how they're supposed to work. So as with other the other podcast episodes I did in the series uh, with online lead generation, I'm going to have a webinar. Um, there's so much in here. There's so much information. And I think visually presenting it to you in a webinar will be a great way to, to learn more about this and to really have it sink in. Uh, so I hope that you guys join me on the webinar. Uh, we're going to focus solely on the topic of SEO and ranking a website to generate Uh, organic leads online, and we're going to discuss the ins and outs of on-page and off-page SEO. We'll talk about that today as well. And I'm going to be deep diving, diving deep, deep diving into the magical search engine pleasing content marketing strategy. And I call it magical because it's, uh, it's a great way to rank your site and to rank it not only for the keywords that most investors target, but to rank it for all kinds of other keywords that also Uh, produce leads and deals. So uh, it's going to be very cool. We're going to talk about all of that stuff into great detail. And the webinar is going to be held on December 13th. That's a Tuesday, I think, December 13th at 7 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock p.m. Central. So be sure to register your seat as soon as you can. Yeah, you should probably go ahead and pause the podcast. It'll still be here when you get back. Don't worry. Head over to leadpropeller.com slash webinar. So that's leadpropeller.com slash webinar and uh, register uh, for that webinar that I'll be having on December 13th. That's going to be a lot of fun. You'll be able to ask some questions and uh, get into all of that. So SEO today, let's let's talk about SEO, which is search engine optimization. Um, And that's pretty much when you get your website to rank in the search results on Google and Bing or any other search engine. And you optimize your site and do things to get recognition from other sites to show that you're relevant and worthy of being displayed at the top of the search results. That's how you get there. That's how you get to the top is by by being worthy of being at the top. And um, so, you know, when people are surprised that they, they create a website and they publish it, make it live, and then they're not getting anything, they're not seeing it in the search results at the top, and they wonder why. Well, it's, you haven't proven yourself yet. A brand new site is not going to show up at the top 
uh, right away usually. Sometimes they do. It's it's random, but um, really you got to kind of work at it. And that's what we're going to cover uh, today. So why should you care about ranking your website and search results? And like I said, you know I generate most of my best ones, so that's a very good reason too. But uh, for from for some some real statistics here, according to IM Forza. Dot com 93% of online experiences begin with a search engine. So online experiences, people go and 93% of the time they're starting with like Google or Bing. And Google owns 65 to 70% of that search engine traffic. So they own the lion's share of that. Most people are on Google searching for stuff. So it makes sense to focus our efforts on how Google works and how Google ranks sites. And that usually translates well into how Bing does as well. And so your site should rank there as well. And so we'll talk mostly today about how it works with um, ranking with Google. But according to a study done by Advanced Web Ranking, the top three spots in the organic search results get over 55% of the clicks. 55%. That's the lion's share. That's the top three spots. So the top three organic search results get 55% of the clicks. And the breakdown is the first position. And this is over a bunch of different industries and keywords. Um, I personally think that with our niche, it might even be higher for the top spots. But first position, 31% of the clicks. So a whole third of the clicks when people search go to that first organic result. So ranking first is very important. Second position getting 14%, and then the third position getting 10%. So if you're in third position for a keyword and you're getting, um, you know, let's say 10 clicks a month, and if it's averaging 10% like they found in the study, then, um, you know, that could be a possible 10 clicks. I'm sorry, 100 clicks if you had 100%. But you could maybe ma multiply that by 3 to get 30% if you were in the first position. So if you move from third position to first, you can triple the number of leads that you were getting. And according to the same study, over 71% of searches result in a page 1 organic click. So almost 3 quarters of people that do a search will click on one of those uh, results on that first page. And here's the startling thing. Page 2 and 3 combined together, page 2 and 3, only get about 5%. So if that doesn't tell you something, I mean, you got to rank. And if you're going to rank, you got to be on the first page. And if you're on the first page, you really want to be in that first spot. Definitely in the first top three so basically, to boil it down, if you don't rank on the first page for a keyword, you might as well not rank at all. And that might seem daunting. That might seem scary. It might seem like, well, man, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I want to even attempt this because I'd have to get on the first page and beat out the competition. But I want you to know because there, there's got to just be an understanding of the time it takes to get to the first page and understanding the commitment that you've got to make and the fact that this is for the long haul uh, because if you don't go into with those expect expectations, you could be spending money and time and then wondering why you're not generating anything from it. And you could maybe do some work and you, maybe after four or five months or something, you're on second page and you're wondering why you're not getting leads and you think, well, man, if, even, if I, even if I get on the first page, am I going to get any leads? Because I'm on the second, I'm not getting any. And it's like, yes, you will get much more. But if you didn't know that, you might just bail and say, man, this is too much work. And uh, and that's what happened. So one other way to think about it is if it was easy, everybody would be doing it and it wouldn't work so well. So it's actually good when you find these situations where it's kind of hard for somebody to do something because if you commit to it and you're persistent and you get there, it's much harder for other people to actually go and beat you out. So, I mean, it's just worth it. Uh, ranking does take time. There's a lot of competition. You really got to have a strategy to rank and then stay ranked. And the investment in time and money is well worth it, though, because, as I've mentioned several times, my cheapest and best leads come from my organic rankings. Uh, they're even better than the, the AdWords ones. And AdWords are great, and we offer a lead propeller managed AdWords service that does great if you want to do that. But I think um, this long-term SEO strategy is something that should be done uh, once you're generating some income from your AdWords uh, getting some leads and doing some deals. But SEO and content marketing is investment made over time that's not going to generate noticeable immediate results, but they're going to build slowly over time. And uh, the real estate investors that stick with it and have a plan are the ones that are dominating the rankings and getting the leads online. So investors that get a site, do nothing or very little, give up after four to six months and figure it doesn't work or it's too hard. 
that's their problem. You know, let let them have that problem because um, it's much easier for me to stay top ranked when I know that other people aren't willing to put in that work. So, uh, what's perceived as a lot of competition really usually isn't as bad as it seems, and we constantly have motivated sellers um, tell us that they've called five or six people and we were the only ones that picked up the phone. So, um, you know, usually the competition with buying houses when you see other people doing motivated seller marketing isn't nearly as bad as what you might expect uh, because of situations like this. So seriously, you know, pick up your phone. And, and, you know, the fact that people don't pick up their phones is crazy to me. They're doing all that marketing and trying to get leads and then they're not even answering calls. And what is a single deal worth to most investors? You know, 20, 30, 40 grand and these people aren't picking up their phones. Anyway, um, two types of SEO strategy. You've got white hat versus black hat. You may have heard of these. Um, black hat SEO is where you use tactics to try and trick Google into thinking that your website is more relevant and more of an authority than your competition. And if you've ever seen a site that has crazy grammar and kind of like weird twisted up text with a bunch of words and stuff, Ranking at the top of the results is probably because of a black hat SEO work that was done it. And the tactics are solely focused on really just appeasing Google, um, Google's robots, you know, because Google doesn't physically go out and have somebody sit there and go to these websites and determine how relevant they are. They have algorithms and computer uh, algorithms, the software, these robots, the spiders that crawl the Internet and parse all of this stuff and try to figure out what it's all about. And so they figure out how that kind of works and then they make the pages for that. Uh, the experience for human visitors is horrible because of this, and you can imagine it's very bad. So you can rank at the top and get people coming to your site, but, but if the site is garbage, it's not going to convert any leads. So what the heck is the point? Not only that, getting uh, ranked quickly using black hat tactics uh, is very short-sighted because I've seen, I, and I've seen several investors uh, outrank other people, other better websites all of a sudden, but it never lasts. Like within a week or so, they're gone, never to be seen again. A lot of times they're pushed back page 27, page 97, or sandboxed altogether. And that's a dreaded Google sandbox, basically meaning you're banned from the search results because you were trying to game the system. And what you are showing is that you're just a sneaky son of a gun and uh, they're not going to you know, reward you at the top position. So Black Hat is, is sort of the, the get-rich-quick approach to SEO, and I do not recommend it. If someone promises you to get your site to the top within a month or two, you should probably not work with them. And and, and besides that, if they promise you that they're going to rank you um, at the top of, of the search results pretty quickly, you need to find out what they mean by that because you don't just rank a site in general for nothing you rank for a keyword right so someone's got to search for something to get results and then you're ranking for that keyword so what is the keyword that you're ranking and i see this all the time because if you talk to seo companies um you know to do your seo work and they'll tell you well, we're going to rank you we can get you ranked probably on the first page within two to three months or something like that um you got to find out what keyword they're talking about because if what they're talking about is something like Somebody searching, I want to sell my house that had 50 cats in it right now. Yeah, that's pretty easy to rank for because it's something that nobody ever searches for. Um, and the, the tougher keywords, the ones that most investors target because they're the ones that with the highest search intent uh, to be leads because they're motivated sellers or things like sell my house fast in whatever your city is and then like we buy houses in whatever city you're in. Um, so you can ask them how, how quickly to rank for those kind of keywords. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, you, you just have to know that if you're looking for, and if you are looking for SEO services, Lead Propeller does offer SEO services. I think it's if you go to leadpropeller.com slash SEO, leadpropeller.com slash SEO, you can see a little bit more about what we do. And, uh, you know, being that we do work solely with real estate investors, we know it pretty well and we're focused on that. So very helpful. Anyway, let's go. So that's black hat. We're going to talk about white hat. And we don't do black hat. I kind of mentioned that now. But, you know, we do only white hat, of course. But white hat SEO plays by the rules of the search engines and considers the website visitor and their experience on your site to be important. So, you know, you want to provide the information and service the searcher is looking for because that's what Google wants. 
because that's their job as a search engine to provide the most relevant and useful sites for what people are searching for. If they don't do that, they're not a valuable asset to people. They won't people won't go to the search engine to use them because they're always producing these results that are garbage. So white hat is the long game, and this is the way to rank your site in a sustainable way and to help bolster your rankings to make it harder for people to outrank you. So white hat is definitely the way to go. And um, seeing SEO as a long-term strategy instead of a get rich quick, I'm going to rank really fast, but it's not going to do much for me. And my site's going to go down the tubes because I did that. Um, so be very careful. So white hat search engine optimization uh, can basically be broken up into two sides. You've got on-page optimization, off-page. And on-page basically consists of the way the website and its pages are constructed and the information that they contain on those pages. And then off-page SEO consists of things that Google looks at that are not on your website or not under your control. So they're not really things that you can typically control yourself. And we'll cover those quote-unquote things in a minute. But these two aspects of SEO, on-page and off-page, need to be considered when trying to rank your website because both are needed to get the top and competitive uh, real estate investing house buying niche that we're all trying to rank in. So on-page SEO uh, is basically, there's three main aspects of the on-page stuff. And these are the, the way your website's created and the content. So basically three aspects are the proper use of HTML, uh, which is the hypertext markup language used to create web pages to show them in the browser. Um, to, so the proper use of the use of that HTML for relevancy, and then the second thing is uh, site architecture. It's basically the way the site is built, and then content is the third one. So you've got HTML for relevancy, site architecture, and then content are the three uh, things that you're going to be looking at for on page. So the proper use of HTML for relevancy as a real estate investor website, it has to have several things so that Google knows your pages are relevant for keywords being searched for motivated sellers. And so some of this might seem a little bit technical to you, talking about H1 tags and stuff like that, but uh, don't don't let it get you too bogged down or worried. So H1 tags are basically like the main heading of the website. You know, usually a website will have a big heading on it, and that's usually with an H1 tag. And so you should only have one of those per page, and that one should contain... The keyword for the, you know, that 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 page is trying to rank for it needs to to have that keyword in the H1 tag for the title, or the heading, the main heading, and usually at the front is better. Uh, then you have H2 tags, H3, H4, H5, and they kind of get smaller and smaller, basically subheadings, and then subheading of subheading and all that kind of stuff. So it's sort of a structure that needs to be had, and uh, I like to have where H1 tags basically have the keyword you're focused on for that page. And then H2 sort of have, like, one of them have the keyword, and then the other ones have, like, related terms to that keyword phrase. And then you have meta tags for your each page um, that get used in different ways. So if you're in looking at a website in the, in the browser, the tab will usually have the title of the website on the tab in the browser. And so that's the meta tag for title. And then there's one for description where some search engines will use that description meta tag to display in the search results. So it shows your URL, your title, and the search results. And then that little paragraph description is basically from the meta description. Another meta tag is keywords, and that's not really used much anymore. So a lot of times I don't even fill that in, and it's not really anything to really to worry about too much. So, and then on top of that, including your keyword that you're focused on ranking that page for throughout places like the first 100 words of the of the page, uh, maybe in an alt tag of an image. So basically, if you go to a site and the, the image hasn't loaded yet, it shows a word there. That's usually sort of like the alt text for that image. And so you can have that keyword in that alt tag for the image. And then you also want it in like your URL to the web page. And so when you construct your your web page, having that uh, in the URL up there, the keyword helps out. And then on top of that, having outbound links and inbound linking. So your your page should be linking out to other relevant information, authority sites, sites that Google thinks are, are high authority stuff, stuff like um, uh, government websites, uh, .edu, um, which are you know education sites, and then you know, things like uh, Wikipedia 
and just other sites that are, are, are basically relevant and high authority and obviously like real estate sites or um, like local sites. So if you're focused on targeting a city, then something relevant to that city that's a high authority for your city. So number two, so we talked about the, the proper use of HTML for relevancy. You know, number two is the site architecture. So this is the way that your site is built, and it's got a huge effect on your ranking because there's thousands of ways to code a website, but many are bad for SEO. And basically what it boils down to what you need is really a mobile responsive site and you know that means the site looks good and adjust no matter what device it's on so a uh, desktop browser looks great and then if you get on an iPad and go into Chrome or or uh, Safari and, and then load the website it's gonna look good on the phone same thing um, and beyond that having it be mobile friendly so this is another thing that Google looks at is how does it get rendered on a mobile phone or something because if the links, it might adjust for the mobile phone and be mobile responsive, but if the links are real close together, it makes it hard for people to click on one without inadvertently clicking on a different link. And so that is sort of classified as not being mobile friendly. So you also want your pages to be mobile friendly, not just mobile responsive. And then if you're curious, there's it's probably, I think last time I looked, my site was getting roughly 40 to 50% of its traffic is from mobile devices. So this is a very serious thing. It's not just a, a thing to try to get a couple extra leads. I mean, this is a, a big part. It's like half of the traffic. So if your site is not mobile responsive, it doesn't adjust to those different sizes. And then people have to scroll to the right and left and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you need to get it updated, get it changed, and get it to be mobile responsive and mobile friendly. Uh, the next thing with regards to the site architecture is page load speed. This is huge. Optimized um, page pages that load fast are huge because um, user experience is what it's all about. So if somebody goes to your site and it takes two, three seconds to load up, there's a big chance that they're just going to hit the back button and leave. And Google knows this, and they want to give results uh, that pop up quickly. They don't want to send people to sites that sit there loading forever. And so this is huge. Ways that you get your site to load quickly are optimizing the above the fold so it gets displayed immediately um, so that that displays quicker. Optimized images. Uh, you can use tinypng.com uh, to optimize images without loss of quality. Very cool. Um, smart coding, uh, things like that. And then WordPress isn't so good at a lot of this stuff uh, because it's got to kind of construct the pages with PHP every time somebody goes to a page. But um, page load speed is, is definitely something with site architecture that you wanna uh, focus on to improve your search engine rankings. Basically, with regards to site architecture, what it boils down to is that your site provides a good user experience. Um, so it's, it's all about making sure that when someone goes to your site, everything just looks good, it works good, it's easy to navigate, it's clear what you're trying to get them to do. It's clear what you provide. It all happens fast, and everything works out great. And, um, you know, basically, I created Lead Propeller Real Estate Investor website so you don't have to figure out all this stuff because I know there's there's so much stuff out there. If you just do a search for SEO, you're going to get millions of results. And um, wading through all of that stuff and trying to figure out what's relevant, what's, uh, what's working, and what is... Um, relevant these days because you know a lot of times those search results you're looking at from 2010 and things change quickly and so some things that may have worked then don't work now and so basically we've created these sites that are optimized and we stay on top of all this stuff so that you don't have to and they, they basically having a lead propeller site takes care of these first two things for you uh, with the um, the way it's built page load speed all that kind of stuff so we talked about uh, proper use of HTML for relevancy and then site architecture. Now we're going to talk about content. And I saved this one for last because it's really one of the most important factors. And Google rewards websites that they deem to be the most relevant and helpful for searchers. And your website content is really what makes you relevant because the more content you have, the more you can be bound, found to be relevant for. And it translates to ranking more and more keywords because you have more and more relevant content and different content, which generates more and more leads, which gives you more and more deals and more and more profit. And um, 
if you don't want that, I don't know why you're listening to the podcast. But um, so content, content, content. You got to create some more content. Uh, our sites come with with a lot of content by default, targeting the main keywords. Um, but you should be creating more. And content's basically web pages on your site, and they include the home page and other pages uh, that, that are linked through 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 your navigation bar, but also blog posts and stuff like that. So basically, your homepage should target about three to five keywords, and then you need to have other pages to focus on ranking for single keywords other than those. And people, the way it used to be is people used to try and rank their homepage for everything. And it's hard to do because you can't possibly have enough content on your homepage to convince Google that that page is relevant for all these different things because it can't possibly be relevant for all of them at the same time. So with the old focus on the homepage alone, you're really only targeting the tip of the iceberg. You're only getting that subset of, of keywords that you're going to be ranking for, and you're going to be losing out on all the other ones. So content marketing is the targeting of lots of keywords using lots of pages or posts on your website that are each relevant for each of the keywords. And uh, what's amazing about the power of this is whenever you start creating these posts and this other content to rank for these keywords, you'll find that Google's ranking you for uh, 10, 15 more keywords just for that one that you were trying to rank for one. So it's pretty cool, and, and you can see the value in this because it, it, you know, you're casting a wider net to catch people uh, searching all kinds of different things from different situations. So how do you create all these posts, right? You know, it seems like a lot. I mean, you don't if you don't know how to create a web page, how are you going to create all these posts and all this content? And this is why WordPress is so popular. WordPress basically is perfect for adding blog posts to your website. It's a content management system, CMS. And um, some of the other real estate investor websites out there are built on, on WordPress. You might have one that's built on WordPress. And we had considered WordPress for Lead Propeller, but really quickly dismissed it because of the lack of easy customization and then sometimes having issues with pay load, page load speed and stuff like that. Sometimes plugins cause problems. Um, and we just saw that as too limiting. And if you've ever tried to edit uh, different parts of a WordPress website, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a mess. Um, so it's not good for, for general websites, in my opinion, and why we didn't go with it. We wanted our sites to be easily customizable, so we built a custom editor, editor so you can kind of point and click and change stuff. And we couldn't really necessarily do that with, with WordPress. So we created a custom editor, and we have different templates to be tailored to anybody's individual taste, and they can change colors and fonts and, and text and all that stuff easily themselves and republish. So it's it's uh, makes it really nice. But but for the ability to easily add content to your site through blog posts, we, we wanted WordPress to be available for that part of the website, not for the entire site. And uh, so we coded up the ability to add a WordPress blog to your site with just a push of a single button. Now this is huge because if you've ever manually installed WordPress, you know it's a pain in the butt and you need to set aside a day for it and most of us don't have a free day to spend messing with that kind of garbage so we created a, a push button install of wordpress and and two lead propeller sites and you know the first time i set that up um i think i still had five or eight steps that people needed to do and since then we've made it to where we got rid of all the steps and it's just it's it's a godsend it's it's just incredible um so with the sites now, you can have, you know, sites that load super flat, fast and are easily customizable and look great with that attached WordPress blog so that you can add this content. So we didn't lock you into the limitations of WordPress. Uh, so please be careful if you're deciding to look into a site designed solely around WordPress because you can, um, excuse me, you can have those um, uh, problems with customization and uh, and page load speed and stuff like that. So four steps to creating a great blog post. Um, how do you do it, right? How do you create this content that you're going to be posting on your website that's going to rank you for these different keywords? Well, first of all, you got to determine the best keyword to focus on. That's where you start. You start with what focus keyword you're going to have. Then you come up with a great title. You write the article, and then you search engine optimize the blog post. And you know I'm going to get down into each of these steps so you know what we're talking about here. So determining step one is determining the best keyword to target. If you use AdWords, you can use the keywords that are converting well. And what I mean by converting well is they clicked on your ad, they came to your website, and they submitted their information or they called you, meaning they became a lead. 
So people search all kinds of things on Google related to real estate and houses, but only a subset of those people and the things they're searching for are related to selling their house fast to an investor. And so you want to target, especially in the beginning, you, you want the keywords that have high search intent that show that people are looking for someone like you and your service, somebody that's buying houses fast, situations like divorce, foreclosure, lots of repairs on a house, inherited a house, um, nightmare tenants. Those kinds of things relate to people wanting to sell a house quickly. And then also just you know blatantly typing in stuff like someone to buy my house, need to sell my house fast. Um, you know, we buy houses because I see uh, the bandit signs all over the place that say we buy houses and things like that, sell my house fast. So you want to target these keywords. Um, our default content for lead propeller sites, when you get one, it already has default content that you don't have to come up with. Focuses on a lot of these main keywords already, but you can add to them with more phrases and stuff like that. So, so you can choose the keywords that show the right intent to sell a house fast is what you want to do. Uh, you can also choose keywords to focus on your target market and real estate in general, and situations that motivated sellers face. And it's it's really all about semantics. So using Google search suggestions can help out. And what I mean by that is if you go to Google and you start typing in a search for inherited house, it's gonna start showing you suggestions. And those suggestions are based on things that you've already searched for before, and likely you haven't searched for something like that. And so it's gonna show you suggestions of what other people have searched that are similar to that. And so you can get great keyword suggestions from that. And so, um, you know, just as an example, some of the main ones would be we buy houses in and then your target city. So for me, it'd be at San Antonio. How to sell your house fast in San Antonio. Who buys houses in San Antonio. How to choose the best house buying company in San Antonio. So you'll notice I include San Antonio in all those. You've got to, to focus and target all of these posts and all this content on your local city because ranking locally is so much easier than ranking nationally and you're not competing with nationally you're competing with people in your market and so always make sure that your site is deemed as relevant for that city because it's much easier to rank for a search term when it's in that city so if somebody's in your city and they're typing just we buy houses but you have a bunch of posts posts about we buy houses in san antonio even if they didn't type in san antonio it's likely going to rank you because they know your pages is paid, gosh, postuses and pageses. Anyway, okay, I'm probably just talking too fast, but um, it's still going to show those results, even if they didn't type it, because they know where the searcher is searching from. Um, so, uh, like, um, and then, like, a real estate related article in the location would be something like San Antonio median home price has increased uh, 10%, and then have an article about that, or five best neighborhoods to buy a house. In San Antonio and these are things just to make your site fuller and um, <clears throat> contain things related to houses related to uh, real estate and your location so these are the things that you want to do uh, another one would be an inherited house and not sure whether to sell or rent question mark would be a good blog post uh, what are the tax implications when selling rental property Tax implications when selling a rental property is another good article. And these are things people are searching for. And if you give them information about this stuff, they might not be thinking about selling the house um, to an investor. But if you give them the information at the bottom of the post, you're talking about how, you know, if you want to know obligation cash offer, you got nothing to lose. Why don't you check out this option that you have? We can make you an offer. And so it's very powerful. It's a good way to reach a bunch of other people. Um, and not just the, the main keywords, we buy houses or sell house fast. You've got all this other stuff that you're going to be ranking for and getting a lot more traffic and a lot more leads. And then um, step two, so that was step one, figuring out what the keyword, what the focus of the blog post is going to be. Step two is going to be come up with a good title. And it's got to be something interesting, at least for somebody searching for that. Don't just do the keyword, make it something relatable. Uh, and interesting and then focus keyword needs to be in the title and should be at the front of the title if possible um, so if you're targeting like inherited house you, know, you can put an inherited a house and not sure whether to sell or rent so that's you know a title that includes keyword and, and at the front um, include the target location in the title also 
So it could be inherited house in San Antonio. I'm not sure whether it's sell or rent. So that'd be a good one. Uh, and don't make the title super long. You need to have it to where it's as um, uh, short as possible, but including and being interested, including the keyword and being interested. Okay, so the next step then, step three is going to be to write the article. And this is where a lot of people run into to difficulty because writing these posts can be very painful. Uh, you got to do some research. You don't want to just be rambling on about stuff that you don't really know a whole lot about. And so Google actually even considers the difficulty of reading your article. Uh, they actually have a way to determine that. So even if, if you're writing, you can't have a bunch of complex sentences, uh, compound sentences, all kinds of like strange grammar and stuff like that. It just the easy reading is what they want. And then an article should be at least a thousand words. Content that is longer is usually deemed more relevant and all inclusive and it gives the searcher better experience. So a thousand words at least. And my advice is to hire out the writing of these articles. So you'd have basically the topic, the title, the keyword, and then like go to upwork.com. It's upwork.com and you can get, uh, you can hire, you can find writers. And typically you're going to spend about two cents a word. So that thousand word article will cost you about 20 bucks have someone else research and write it and man you know I don't know about you but for me to pay that is well worth it because it takes me a couple hours at least excuse me to write uh, my own so we know that writing these articles isn't something that 99% of investors actually want to do and I hear you I've spent a lot of time writing hundreds of, of articles over the years it's very time consuming and sort of life draining if you're not interested in the subject um, and that's why lead propeller customers have the ability to purchase content packs. So we decided, hey, let's create this content for people. Uh, we'll manage all that, and then they can just buy these content packs uh, of articles. So they're packs of articles, so multiple articles, usually about eight articles per pack that already are SEO optimized to target and rank for the best keywords for real estate investors. So when you buy one of these content packs, you basically can set it up to be scheduled to drip um, a new article or blog post out to your website over time and it's usually like once a week and it's important not to publish all of them at once because Google considers website freshness and uh, reward sites that are updated frequently so you don't want to just publish them all at once and then go um, go stale and not really have anything posted for months and months um, so we set it up to where it automatically will do set up this timing for you you can specify how many days or whatever between each of the blog posts uh, that they go out and get published and they automatically publish for you and put your information into the content um, as far as your contact number and name, your business name, all that kind of stuff goes into these content packs, into the articles, and you don't have to write them. They're already set up. They're already optimized. But um, uh, you can get those and then set them up to publish on autopilot. And, man, this is just something. This is incredible, the technology that we can build and innovate and, uh, you know, if we just had this kind of thing whenever I was getting started with websites, it would save me a ton of time. I would just love to have that, be able to buy these content packs and just have them dripped out and not have to go through all the time-consuming work of getting it written, optimizing it, posting it, and keeping up with all that. You know, when you're running around making offers on houses, I mean, stuff like that just is the stuff that goes to the wayside first. And you don't commit, and then you just give up. And, and so having these ways... Of having this stuff done for you and paying for it you actually end up saving so much money in the long run and, and making more money because you're you know using your time more wisely so um, anyway it was too cool not to share I had to share it with you but um, step four now so we've, we've determined the keyword we've uh, come up with the title written the post now we need to optimize the blog post so you can have it written but you've got to optimize this thing so that it's relevant in Google uh, can deem it as relevant and authoritative for your keyword that you're trying to focus. So it'll rank that post for that um, keyword. So um, I had mentioned just now that the the content packs that we offer at LeadPill are already all, uh, SEO optimized. So let's talk about the optimization that you need to do for each of these posts. Um, you basically need to include relevant images and do image optimization for fast loading because we talked about that page load speed being an issue. Um, so images, <clears throat> you can just go to tinypng.com 
and drag and drop your image onto there and it'll optimize it with that loss of quality. And what I mean by relevant images are, you know, a lot of times you need to include images of houses and things like that because Google can actually see, not see, but they, they can run uh, through the image and, and kind of figure out what's in the image. And so if you have relevant stuff in your images, uh, it's, it's, it helps you out. You also need to link to high authority and relevant websites. So this is that, that um, outbound linking, linking out to other websites. You need to do that. Take some of the words in your article uh, that are relevant to some kind of information that, that's really spelled out and found on another website like Wikipedia or um, housing and urban, urban development, a lot of their stuff, or even IRS for tax stuff if you're writing an article about taxes. Uh, but uh, you also need to interlink. So you can link to out to all those authoritative websites, but you also should link to other relevant blog posts on your blog. Um, interlink these posts together so that you can uh, boost the rankings of all of them and, and make for a better user experience because you're allowing a way for your, your readers to find out more on your website about this stuff uh, that's relevant. And so that's kind of why we broke these in content packs up into content packs is we have these articles that are all about the same topic that are interlinked. So it's it's cool and powerful, helps with ranking. So you need to include the focus keyword at least four or five times if you've got about a thousand word article or more. Just make sure that that keyword is, is throughout the article several times and included in like a subheading, which is an H2 tag um, and things like that. So and then you need to include related keywords found in Google search suggestions because it's all about semantics. And if, if you type in your focus keyword for that article into the Google search and they give you the recommendations. And if you hit enter and actually do the search, if you scroll down to the bottom, they have other similar searches. Man, I would include most, if not all of those in the article. Make sure they show up somewhere in there. Uh, it really helps because Google is showing you that they feel like all those phrases and search terms are very similar to what you searched. So if you're trying to focus on that keyword and you're providing all this other relevant similar phrases, they're going to say, man, this, is, this post is really focused on this topic and it's it's um, very relevant um, so you know determining whether your your blog posts that you create are, are optimized correctly can be a challenge for for a lot of people if you don't want to go through and learn hardcore SEO down to all the little elements and stuff that you need to do um, one of the things that we did was with the the WordPress installations on lead propeller sites is we include for free a lead propeller SEO tool. And this basically shows you all the all the points that need to be hit to optimize a page properly. And um, we'll show you whether it's it's optimized. And if it, if it has some points that you haven't hit well, it'll tell you and you can go and optimize those. So it's very cool. It really takes all the guesswork out of it and, and saves you a lot of time and, and lets you know that what you're doing is going to be rewarded because you're doing it right. Because you can spend all day long, you can spend some money in getting this written, post these things, and they're not optimized well, and it just doesn't work, and it was just a waste of time and money. So uh, that Lead Propeller SEO tool really helps by taking out that guesswork of whether uh, what you're posting is optimized correctly or not. It's kind of cool because you put in the keyword that you're focused on, and it tells you whether that keyword is in all the places it needs to be. And if you included outbound links or images and all that kind of stuff, we go through all those points and check them and then report back uh, whether you need to do some more optimization. Okay, so that that's, you know, we've been going here for 45 minutes or so, and, um, you know, that's all on-page white hat SEO. Let's talk about off-page real quick because this is huge and has a big bearing on how well your site ranks. And um, basically off-page are things that you can't control typically, and it's things off outside of your website that Google looks at, and, and really what it boils down to is backlinks, right? So mostly just backlinking. And whenever Google started, this is sort of the big thing about their algorithm that they um, set up that made Google what it is. And it basically was a way for them to look at how many links were coming from other websites to a website to tell whether that website was more authoritative or other people found it useful because they figured, well, if somebody linked to it, they thought it was good information. And so that's how they built the, the search engine. 
And so obviously if you have a brand new site and it gets published, you just got published, nobody's linking to you. And so Google doesn't have much to go on other than what it can determine by your on-page. So you need to get some backlinks and um, you know, ways to, to have things pointing to you from other websites so that um, you can bolster your, your ranking there. So uh, backlinks basically show Google that your page has authority. Most sites have very little, if any, backlinks. And honestly, a lot of search uh, real estate investor websites don't have a lot of backlinks. It's not like uh, if you've had somebody that's already been out for a while, like had a website out for a while, you might be worried they've got thousands of backlinks. Usually that's not the case. If they do, it's probably a bunch of junk black hat SEO backlinks, which is actually worse for them uh, than not having any. So backlinks from, from high authority websites is what you want. And, you know, we've talked about what high authority website is, but basically Google looks at it like if, if a site that has a bunch of backlinks going to it, then links to you, then you're going to get a lot of uh, power from it and authority from it. And, and really what it boils down to is if you get a really high authority backlink from a great strong website, it's worth way more than the same amount of, you know, backlinks from websites that aren't as good. So if you got like these directories or something that you're posting to that are real junky and spammy, you could have 10,000 of those and that won't help you as much as having one from, um, you know, a dot, dot, dot .gov or dot .edu page or, you know, even just your, like your local chamber of commerce or something like that. So uh, one backlink from super relevant high authority site can be worth more than thousands of those crappy ones. So it, it, it makes sense to, to focus on trying to make your site really something that people want to want to link, link to. And so what you want to do is get ring, links from backlinks from relevant local and real estate related websites. Local and real estate related sites are good sites to try to get backlinks from. And um, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit in the webinar. I think we'll go ahead and probably try to cover that a little bit in the webinar as far as using press release to, to help you out with doing that. But uh, we don't have time in the podcast for it. But dues of getting backlinks from relevant local and real estate related websites don't Go to Fiverr.com and hire somebody for five bucks to get you hundreds of backlinks. Don't do that. It's not good. Um, another thing that you need to do when you get backlinks is vary the anchor text. So if you have a way to have somebody uh, link to your site from their website, the anchor text is basically the the text that the link is made up of. And... Um, you know, a lot of times you'll see people put like we buy houses and then the city and that'll be the anchor text going to their website. Well, if you've got a, a, a site and you use that that we buy houses in whatever city for all of your backlinks, so you have like a hundred of those and that's all they are, it's not natural because Google knows that when people backlink to other sites, the majority of them are usually just the domain name as the backlink, the anchor text. And then they, they um, so they look at that sort of... Um, that spread out of different um, anchor texts and can tell whether it's kind of natural or whether it's not. And so that's where like doing a lot of those hundreds and thousands of backlinks from Fiverr can hurt you because they typically use the same anchor text on all of them and it's very, very spammy. Okay, so the other thing that you can do is the local citations. And it's much easier to rank locally, like I said before, than nationally. And so you got to make sure that Google knows that you're relevant for your city. And the big thing about local citations and the main thing, if, if there's one thing you remember about local citations, is that you have to have consistency. All of your local citations should have the exact same business name, address for the business, phone number. Everything should be exactly the same. You can vary the description of the business up a little bit, but all the contact info and all that needs to be exactly the same. If you have a bunch of differing information across uh, different websites, um, it's not going to help you as much as having all of it exactly consistent. So some great sites that you can go to and get a lot of these free local citations. And it's basically just sort of, um, you know, listings of your business really is what a local citation is. But you can go to Yelp.com, Local.com, CitySearch.com, SuperPages.com hotfrog.com, 
easylocal.com, ibegin.com, yp.com, localpages.com, and then do a search for your local chamber of commerce website. And a lot of times I think you can get some some listings there. You can post your business listing on the local chamber of commerce website, which is pretty powerful. So great pro tip for you. So I know we kind of rushed through that a little bit, but backlinking is something that doesn't happen quickly. It takes time, um, but you can set up these local citations, help out big time. You can get the Facebook business page set up, your Google local business page set up. You need to do all these. Uh, your Bing business page set up. Those are all free, and um, be consistent. Make sure that all the local citations have the exact same business information. It's going to help you out, help you rank locally. And if you do those things, and over time, you can start seeing sometimes when people search certain keywords in your city on Google Maps and stuff like that, it'll pop up yours as one of the local sort of results where it shows the map and it shows some of the businesses. So that's very important to do that kind of stuff. really helps you out. So anyway, that's... um, that's SEO and content marketing now. Like I said, we'll dive deeper into that stuff and share a lot more in the webinar. Uh, it's a lot easier to do when I can show you a lot of this stuff. And we're going to cover, um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to show you the Lead Propeller SEO tool and how easy it is just to install and drip out content using our content packs. So you can see that and see how cool that is. But uh, be sure to register your seat for the webinar. It's at, uh, you can go to leadpropeller.com slash webinar, leadpropeller.com slash webinar. If you can't remember that and you can remember 58, just go to uh, flippingjunkie.com slash 58, uh, flippingjunkie.com slash 58. That's the show notes page, and I'll have a link to the webinar registration there. So be sure to join me. Thank you very much for listening to the Flipping Junkie podcast. If you haven't subscribed on iTunes, please do. Uh, rating and reviews are always, always appreciated. I get a lot of people email me and um, and message me on different uh, platforms, LinkedIn, stuff like that, and tell me how much they love the um, the podcast. And um, I always ask if if they're you'd be willing to go to to iTunes and leave a rating and review. It'd help me out a lot. Uh, it's a lot of work to put together the podcast, and so doing that helps it to um, gain some traction. So if you would, if you don't know how to leave a rating and review on iTunes, you can go to flippingjunkie.com slash rate, R-A-T-E. And anyway, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time.